Hey there, in this lesson, we're gonna learn how to create these interactions where content sort of slides out of view whenever we're scrolling down and slides back into view whenever we're scrolling up. And then there's kind of an issue here. If we open up the menu and we scroll down, you'll notice we can't close the menu because the nav kind of slid out of view. So we'll work on fixing that here too. But first I'm just gonna show the super simple, easy way to do this with Webflow interactions. So if we head over to the interactions tab and we head over to page trigger, we can create a page scrolled interaction. And the key here is it needs to be applied to every page uh, one by one when we do it this way. And we have two uh, sort of steps. We can say play an animation when the page scrolls up and play an animation when the page scrolls down. So we'll start with the page scroll down and I'll call this uh, page scroll down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our nav component here and we're gonna apply a move transform to it. And we're gonna make sure this affects the class, always wanna affect the class. And we will transform this on the Y axis up negative 100%. So it's completely out of view and just hit in. And we can save that. Then we'll create our page scroll up animation. So I'll just start the animation. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the page scroll down. That way we have a good starting point here. We'll open this up. And we'll say page scrolled uh, up is what we'll name this one. And we just want to move this nav back to 0% so it's revealed again. So whenever we're scrolling up, the nav will come back into view. Whenever we're scrolling down, the nav will hide. So if we go ahead and preview this, sure enough, we scroll down. And then if we scroll up even just a little bit, it comes back in view. So that's all working fine, but Webflow Interactions, unfortunately, doesn't give us a way to um, disable this whenever the menu is open. So we're going to go ahead and use GSAP instead for the second example. So I'll head over to my website. I'm going to do a page uh, scroll direction, or let's see, I know I called it direction, scroll direction change right here. So the first step is to import the GSAP and GSAP scroll trigger library, and I'll go ahead and add that. Um, this is going to go in the before closing body tag section, and it's going to go above my code sandbox file here. So I can save that there. And then I'll go ahead and take all of the code here and just copy that over and bring it over to my file here. So what we're doing here is we're listening for when we're scrolling past the body and we're listening if we scrolled up or versus scrolling down. There's a couple options. We could maybe click on a trigger div to play a Webflow interaction or hide show a class, which I think is what we're gonna do in here. We'll just use the combo class method. So I'll go ahead and delete the console code and I'll delete the click code and we only want to keep the hide show class. So the element we want to um, hide and remove a class from is going to be this nav component here. So I'll just copy that class. I'm actually going to duplicate this so we're not affecting the home page version. I'll say nav component too. Um, so we are going to apply this class here and we're going to add a class of hide to it whenever we're scrolling down and we'll remove the class of hide from it whenever we're scrolling up. So what we can do is go ahead and first of all apply a transition and we'll apply it to transform and that way when we move the nav up and down um, it's going to animate over whatever duration we set here. So I'll set 400 milliseconds and then we can add that combo class of hide onto the nav and we'll apply a transform and we'll move it up to negative 100%. So it's sliding out of view when that class is on and it slides back into view when that class is off. So we can go ahead and publish this example with that code saved and let's just test it and make sure it's working so far. So here we go, we slide down, perfect, and we scroll up and it comes back in. Yep, so that's working great. And then the next thing we wanna do is disable this whenever sort of the nav is open. So I'll go ahead over to jQuery events and we need to in a way to know if the nav is open or closed. So what I'm gonna do is copy this code and we'll say nav open and close. So we're gonna trigger this whenever we're clicking on, let's say this nav button right here. So we'll say whenever we click on the nav button, we need a way to know if this is the first click or the second click. So I'm gonna to toggle the class um, on the nav component itself. And I'll save this in a variable, call it let uh, nav 
equal, and that way we can just reuse this one class. If we ever want to change the class in the future, we can change it uh, in one place and have it update everywhere. So here we are. Um, so I'm just using that nav variable, which refers back to this class. So whenever we click on this button, I want to toggle a class on the nav itself. So I'll grab my nav and I'm going to um, toggle class. And I'll toggle a combo class on the nav called is open. And then I'm going to create, uh, actually, that's all we really need to do there. So is open. So if we go ahead and refresh this and we right click and inspect, I'm going to make sure this class is being added to my nav, uh, which should be right here. Yep, perfect. So let's go ahead and click this. And you'll notice it gets that class of is open. Let's click again. And it removes that class of is open from the nav. So we can keep track of whether the nav is open or closed. That's perfect. So then we just want to make sure that whenever that open class is on the nav, um, that the nav can't move up. So we'll copy the class of our nav, head over to our CSS embed, and we'll say whenever it has a combo class of is open, we're going to apply a transform trans uh, translate uh, y of zero percent. So this class, because it becomes it it uh, comes after the other class, it's always going to win out. So for instance, we already have a class called hide that is doing this essentially. It's transforming it up by negative 100%, but because this uh, is open, is written after the hide one, uh, this one is going to always override whatever the hide is doing whenever is open is one there. Uh, so Webflow writes all the CSS for us right there with that hide class. I'm just making sure my is open one is in the embed and it's good to go. So let's go ahead and publish that and let's check it out. So I am scrolling down, the nav is hidden, scrolling up, it is revealed. And if I open the menu and scroll down, you'll notice the nav isn't hiding anymore, no matter which direction I'd go. And you'll notice that that class of hide is on there and it's even coming after the is open class, but because the is open style is further on down the style sheet, it wins out over the hide class. So it's overriding. See that the hide class is being crossed out right there. So that's good. And whenever we close this again, then the hide class just takes over. So if we had scrolled down, um, it's going to be hidden when we close, or if we scroll up, it's going to reveal. So it's just going to remember um, the last direction we, we moved. So I scroll up and close, the menu stays open. But if I scroll down and close, the menu will close. So it's remembering our direction there. And I think the only other thing we need to account for is in Webflow, you can actually click somewhere over here to close the nav. And you'll notice that this is open is still on. So that isn't working anymore. Um, so let's see if there's any, I don't think there's any object that we're clicking on. Oh yes, there is. There's something called nav overlay right here. And clicking on that is actually what's closing the menu. So we need to make sure when we click on that nav overlay that we're actually um, removing that is open class. So what I'll do here is copy this code here and we'll say on click of our WNAV overlay, which is just a class Webflow gives to this element. We want to grab our nav and we want to remove the is open class from it like so. And now we should be good. Let's see. So I can do this. It's locked in place. And if I click out here to close the nav, um, still not working. Let's see. I wonder if the is, let me see if the is overlay, if our click is even running on that thing. So this is how I usually debug code. I'll do a console.log test. And let me see if I get that test in the console when I click on that overlay. I want to make sure this click is actually running. So let's open it up. Let's click on this overlay part and it's not actually running. So it's not allowing me to attach sort of a click event um, to this uh, for whatever reason. We have the menu. 
Yeah, and the overlay we can't attach a, a click event to even though it's covering the screen. So I think what I would have to do here is build it actually with a custom nav instead of Webflow's default nav. That way I have my own overlay div here that I build and I can create my own um, sort of uh, interaction for that instead of relying on the Webflow native one. Um, but yeah, that, that's one little bug I'll fix in the clonable before I publish it. But other than that, I think it's in a good place. So this question came up in our Webflow Wizards sort of Slack group. And one use case for this too was like, what if we're in view of a certain section and we want the nav to always be revealed while we're scrolling past that section? And then it can go back to hide show inside the other sections. Um, so uh, to do that, we can... I'll create a, an example real quick of what that would look like. So if I grab this section here, um, let me give it a combo of is about, there we go. Let me go ahead and throw these images in into those sections just so we can get a clear indication of what this looks like. Let's replace that there and let's go ahead and throw this one in here. Oh. All right, perfect. So let's say whenever we're scrolling past this section here, we want to lock the nav to where it's always in view. And maybe I'll make this section a little bit taller so we have a good bit of room to work with there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create sort of a, I would start with an each loop just in case there's multiple instances of that section on the page. It may or may not be the case, but this way it would work even if there's multiple sections on the same page that you want to lock. Um, so we'll say section, is about and for each one of those sections we want to create a gsap scroll trigger so we'll do scroll trigger dot create and our trigger element is going to be this section that we're currently looping through and then we get to determine when we want to lock the nav from hiding so in our case it'll probably be let's say maybe we want it to lock whenever the top of the section is at the top of the screen so top of section top of screen and we want it to end uh, let's see, when do we want it to unlock? We can have it unlock whenever the bottom of the section is at the top of the screen. So whenever it's completely out of view. And then we can say something like um, on enter. So that's whenever, whenever this reaches the top, that on enter, we can run some code. Let's do this here. We would add a class to the nav and Let's say on, on leave, we would remove that class from the nav. And then on enter back, we would want to add it back to lock it. So I think what I'm going to do is go over to my scroll trigger code because there's just a, a slightly better way to write this. And that's just with this on toggle. So it covers both directions that you're going. You don't have to manually say scroll up is one thing, scroll down is another thing. So I'll just replace all that with one toggle. All right, so we are going to be grabbing our nav here. And we're going to be adding a class. I'm going to reuse the same as open class. You could create a different class for this, but we, we already know this class is locking the nav, so might as well keep it in our case. Um, so let me go ahead and publish this, and let's see how this works. All right, so here we are, we are here. And so scrolling up and down, the nav can show and hide. As soon as we get into this section, the nav comes into view and it stays in view, no matter which direction we're scrolling. And then as soon as we leave that section, the nav can hide again. Um, so we're locking the nav only while scrolling past a certain section. And in the other sections, the nav is always in view or it's conditional. Um, and even with that, we still have our open Yep, the only thing we would probably want two separate classes here, um, just so that the that these two don't conflict with each other. Because like, if I scroll into the section I'm adding is open, but if I click on this uh, menu button, it's going to remove is open, and I don't want to do that. So it would probably be best to have two separate states. Um, like is there's probably a much better name for this class, but I'll use is section. Um, and I'll just have that is section class do the same thing. That way it's not conflicting with my nav class. Um, we have two sort of classes. And since they both do the same thing, we can just 
had them in here instead of having two copies of the same code. Awesome. And then that way the nav doesn't mess up with the section. They are two separate classes. So let's go ahead and publish that. And let's see what we have. Perfect. And now this is always in view. And even if I click the menu, perfect and close, it's still locked. And then if I come over here, the menu and the section trigger are acting independently of each other. So awesome. And that is great. So yeah, that wraps up how to create these sort of scroll interactions. I'll be sure to clean this up a little bit and uh, publish the clonable in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch you in the next one.